to you this particular hour, especially from the National Assembly. We have the Cabinet Secretary Chirchir from Energy there, but now also in studio we shall be coming back a little bit later to have a conversation on employees and employers and responsibilities therein. I shall be having that discussion a little bit later. But now let's go straight to the National Assembly where Energy Cabinet Secretary Davis Chirchir and Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority Director General Daniel Kipto are appearing before the National Assembly Energy Committee to answer questions regarding the Embakasi gas explosion. Let's follow part of the proceedings live from Parliament. Then a new, a new plaster had been put by the door, listing the things that you cannot do. You can walk, not walk in here without these well, things that you cannot walk in there, you know, cannot walk in with a phone by the, by, by the gate. It is there we, when, when we visit, and I'm going to ask that we visit this site. It is there. So, and then again, they were arrested. Or the premises uh, was raided. But nothing happened until the other day that uh, people were killed. This premises, the owner of these premises, the recommendation uh, of... Uh, one of the law enforcing, I believe it was either DPP or DCI, recommended that he be charged with seven murders because he did it knowingly, but circumventing the law. There is no way that Epra would know, since Epra knew that that thing existed two, three years ago, and then took them to court, and then it's back up operational. Whose responsibility is it to make sure that it doesn't operate? Who's the, license, who's, who's the person that's supposed to do the, you know, issue the licenses? So you might license somebody to do business at point B, but they know that the lucrative point to do business is point A. They will go and apply and get the license at point B and then come and do whatever needs to be done. So uh, and refilling, the, all the gadgets to do the gas refilling were found at the Muradi uh, gas explosion uh, site. And it was going on. Same thing is happening with this one that is in Maradaima. And we'll also bring you proof in form of a video of uh, what is happening in Maradaima. All right, uh, DG, listening to Moshima Mawade, it is almost clear that uh, you actually indeed knew that about this facility legal operation before the explosion. It appears that uh, you had attempted to stop the operations, the illegal operations there, but failed. So we want to understand, is that the case? You had uh, uh, tried to stop these operations, you had taken these guys to court, you had raided them, but they still continued with operations, so that then you can tell us. Again, back to this very nice document, uh, what is going to be different? When you raid and they continue, you raid, they continue. Uh, when you feel like you have hit the limit, where do you normally go? Where, where did you report that, for instance? Now, as an operator, you don't have your own police, you don't have your own uh, prosecutors, you've gone, this is your end. You've tried, but these facilities continue to operate. Then what becomes the end of uh, uh, such frustrations? My, chair, my question was, yes. can the DG tell us whether uh, they have in the past arrested this person, Kimadi, and uh, his colleague, and attempted, uh, has, has, uh, you know, have they done it in the past? And when was it and what transpired after that, please? You tell us. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and Honorable Members. I think um, just to answer the question, I want to start again by, by, by clarifying that um, the the premise where the incident happened in Miradi and Bakasi, one, was not licensed. Two, it was not a filling plant. It was operating, as Waziri had said, as a garage by day. And in the dead of the night, uh, trucks were driving in and being refilled. As we, we have clarified in the document that is before you, that there was a truck that came in and was filling directly from the truck into cylinders, which is, one, not safe, Two is not legal in terms of the legal notice. 100, which is the LPG regulation, which we do enforce. In terms of this question that Honorable Mawade has said, is that EPRA knew that there was a facility. Uh, there, was a, there was a facility there. 
we were aware of the premise, but there was no, no, license, no license facility. In the year 2020 and the year 2021, I can confirm that yes, through EPRA's enforcement action, uh, there was an illegal facility that had been put up at that same, at that same site, which EPRA proceeded to demolish, and uh, the perpetrators, including Mr. Kimathi, were taken to court. And uh, they were then uh, fined uh, in the court of law. Chair, you'd ask a question in terms of uh, uh, what is our role when it comes to uh, the, the prosecution of these perpetrators. Chair, through this honorable house, other than, as I said in the past, even in the public, other than probably uh, the Sexual Offences Act, it is only the Energy Act 2019 and the Petroleum Act 2019 that has minimum fines. A minimum of five years imprisonment and a minimum fine of 10 million shillings. But the court process, as you may be aware, Chair, is not within the gift of the sector-specific regulator that is EPRA. We work in a multi-agency manner. When it comes to surveillance and enforcement, uh, we work with the state security agencies. As Waziri had said, for instance, uh, with the support of this uh, committee, we are going about the recruitment process. And uh, the question has been asked is how, by Honorable uh, Owinos, how far we are with the process. We are recruiting 121 staff. Uh, that process should be concluded before the end of the financial year. That will give us more people. Today, uh, as the regulator, we have three officers uh, and one administrative person uh, dealing with Nairobi region. Nairobi region is Nairobi Metropolis, five counties. So when it comes to undertaking the mandate that this house has given us by law, we work with other state actors, we work with other regulators. So this is uh, the, 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 the real situation in terms of the question that Honorable Mulanya has asked in terms of, and the question you've asked here is how do you ensure that this doesn't happen in terms of the interventions in the short term? We have requested and we have been granted uh, uh, the, the, the privilege to be able to sit in the county security committees uh, where we can be able then to provide this intelligence. In terms of the question that Rubaloeda has asked, we have provided annexes here where we have been writing uh, to the state security agencies for support in enforcement. We have been engaging with them. We've written to the DPP in terms of prosecution, in terms of fast tracking the cases that are before the courts. We've also written uh, to the Chief Register of the Judiciary in terms of fast-tracking those cases, and we've also uh, been engaging uh, with the public. When it comes to awareness, uh, as Honorable Mawade is saying, really, as a sector-specific regulator, can we be in every home, every neighborhood, every business premise? Uh, we really need a collaborative approach, and that's why we're also focusing on public education and awareness, so that then the public, the honorable members who are representatives of the public, can also help us in the terms of whistleblowing, in terms of giving us the information, and as Waziri had said, in light of the incident that happened in Miradi, we are now getting a lot of intelligence, a lot of phone calls from the public themselves and saying there is a facility operating in our area. Can you come and check as to whether they are compliant? Uh, to use uh, the example of Miradi, for instance, uh, we are aware that uh, some of the residents in that area were aware uh, that uh, there were trucks that were coming in in the dawn of the night. They will be able to bring those cylinders to that area to be refilled uh, at what you can say, quote unquote, a cheaper rate, but it is very, very, very unsafe and also illegal. So for us, uh, Chair and, and honorable members, the question they were asking is how do we work together to ensure that this does not happen? Okay. Mm. Fiscal planning, Chair, as you've said, uh, in the fourth schedule of the Constitution is a county function. When it comes to change of user, that is not within our gift as the regulator. And the chicken and egg question as to which came first, is it the human settlement or the facility? We have taken the administrative action of anything within 200 meter radius because life is more valuable. Mm. We could then deal with, as Honorable Molanya asked, some of the legal consequences of, of that administrative action as to whether it's fair administrative action as, uh, as, as per the law because people have invested. And when it comes to moving uh, mm. that particular facility, the question that we have to have also with the county governments and the Council of Governors is at whose cost as well, because you have Kenyans who've invested. And as you can see, Chair, uh, some of the administrative decisions that we've taken as a regulator to ensure that this does not happen mm. to Kenyans is also being challenged in the courts of law. So we, so, so we, uh, so that we can... Uh...